Hi, I'm Lisa Bardot, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to paint this vibrant orange in digital watercolor in Procreate with this fun rainbow magic line work. For this tutorial, I have a special gift for you. I created a sample pack of my popular watercolor wonder brush set for Procreate. The sample pack includes three watercolor brushes, a textured canvas, and a sketch to get you started. There's a link to download the sample pack in the description below. And one more thing before we get started, we are painting an orange today because it is the traditional first prompt of making art every day. A drawing challenge that I've been writing for the past five years now going into six. Each month we pick a fun theme and provide you with daily drawing prompts, motivation, and tutorials to help you nurture your creative practice. We've got some really exciting things planned for 2024, including switching to a monthly format. We've got this really amazing drawing journal that you get every month to help you pick your favorite prompts, set goals, and reflect on your progress. Participation in Making Art Every Day is free, and we would love to have you a part of our community of artists. You can learn more at bardobrush.com slash join M-A-E. Without further ado, let's get started. After you download the Watercolor Wonder Sample Pack, you'll find it in your Downloads folder as a zip file. Tap it to open it up, and then open this folder that appears. And inside you'll find a PDF about the brushes, an orange sketch, a Watercolor Wonder Texture Canvas, and the Sample Brush Pack. Tap the brush set, and it will import into Procreate. And then go back to your Files app, and then you're gonna tap the textured canvas. This is a Procreate file, so tap that and it should open up into Procreate. Let's take a look at the Layers panel. In here we have our texture group. This is gonna give us some beautiful watercolor texture on our artwork. A layer that we're gonna start painting on, and then we have this layer up here for our sketch. You can use this layer to sketch whatever subject you want. I think this technique lends itself well to so many different subjects, but if you wanna follow along with me in the video, let's load this layer up with our orange sketch. We're gonna to go to the Actions menu, Add, and then Insert a File. I'm gonna to navigate to my Downloads folder and into the Watercolor Wonder Sample Pack folder and choose the orange sketch. Then we're gonna to go to the Layers and we're going to reduce the opacity of this sketch. So we're gonna tap this little M right here and then slide this slider down until it's about like 20%. Then we're gonna tap onto the layer called Start Painting here so we can start painting. For this technique, we'll begin by painting in the different areas of our illustration. So we'll start with the orange. Let's go up to our colors and we'll choose a nice bright orange color like that. And then we'll go into our brushes and go into the watercolor sample set. And we're gonna start with the Glaze Hard Edge Round. This is one of my favorite all-purpose brushes from the set, and it's actually a glaze brush, so what's cool about this is when you layer strokes, anywhere that it overlaps, they have this darkening effect, and you can also use it, I'll switch my color for just a second, to mix colors, so there I have a yellow, and if I were to overlap that with a blue, I'd get some green, so it's a really fun brush, and I use this one actually a lot in my watercolor paintings and I love the texture of it as well. So let me undo all that and go back to my orange. Okay, so again, we have the glaze hard edge round, and right now my brush set is set to 56%, and I think that will work nicely. So we're gonna color this in sort of coloring book style, and the key to this is that we're gonna try and color things in with one continuous stroke. So I'm gonna start with the orange, and I'm gonna just kind of trace around the leaf like this, and then around the edge of the orange, and I'm not picking my pencil up, and it's okay if it's not completely precise or perfect. We're gonna be overlaying some fun line work that's gonna kind of hide all the imperfections, so if you don't get it perfect, that's okay. So go around and do the whole outline. I haven't picked up my pencil at all, and now I'm coming back and just starting to color in inside the outline. And this brush is pressure sensitive, so the harder you press, the bigger it gets. So that's great for either fine details, you can use light pressure or heavy pressure if you wanna like color something in a little bit more quickly. So I still have my pencil down on the screen, I haven't lifted it up. And now I've colored in the whole shape. And you can see like it's not perfect and that is totally okay. 
All right, so we've done the orange. Now I'm gonna focus on our leaves here. So I'm gonna do kind of like a two-tone effect where I have like a lighter green on one side and a little bit darker green on the other side. So I'll start with the lighter of the two greens. I'm gonna choose kind of a yellowish green. Nothing too bright and saturated. I'm gonna bring my color down to about right there. And then I'm gonna paint the bottom of each leaf in this lighter green color. So again, I'm just kind of tracing the outline of the section and then coloring it in all with one continuous stroke. So I'm gonna do this one next. So, and now that I'm right next to the orange color, it's totally okay if there's like a little bit of overlap, like here, and a little bit of white space. I think those actually make it look a little bit more convincing and more like real watercolor. So that's totally fine too. And I'll do the bottom of this leaf. Oops, try it again. Going around the petal, and then just outline the whole shape and color it in in one continuous stroke. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna pick a little bit darker green to do the other side of these leaves. So I'm gonna go up to my colors and I'm actually gonna go into kind of some cooler green. So I'm going this way in the, in the ring and then a little bit this way in the disc. So I'm getting like something that's darker and more saturated. And I'll just do a little swatch to test it out. I think that color looks good. So I'm gonna start doing the other half of all these leaves. Got a little section right there. Tracing around the petal, around the outside of the leaf. And then coloring it in. And I even like, sometimes you leave little white spots there. I think that also looks more like natural watercolor too. Okay, this leaf next. Color that in, and then we have one more leaf to do in the same way. And then color that in. All right, so now we have our three leaves done, and we're ready to move on to our stem. I'm gonna do the stem in sort of a light brown. So I'm gonna go up to my colors. I'm gonna choose kind of, I'm here in the oranges, and then I'm gonna choose something that's not too, not too dark, not too saturated. I think right there is good for this kind of brown color. And then I'm gonna do the stem and these little like stems that come off all in one continuous stroke. So I'll start up here, go around the petals like that. And so I'm doing the whole stem, not lifting my pencil up. And then I still have my pencil down on the screen. I'm gonna travel over into these smaller little stems. Not lifting my pencil up. There we go. And I've done all of that in one continuous stroke. A Couple more things to do. Um, we have this little bit right here, a little like star shaped bit at the bottom of the stem. And I'll do that in just like a green color. So kind of similar to the leaf. Fill that in. As you can see, I'm not being super precise about it. There's some overlap and that's all totally fine. And now let's do our flowers. I'm gonna do those in kind of like a creamy color. So some something here in the warm yellows and just very light like that. And then just paint that into the flowers. Be pretty loose with this color because it's so light. There we go. So just color in the petals in one continuous stroke. Okay. All right, so that is step one. We've painted in all the different areas of this subject, and now we get to add some really fun line work. The line work is gonna give this piece all of its definition in personality, and we're gonna apply this really fun kind of like a rainbow effect to it that's really, really cool. So let's start by going up to our layers and we're gonna tap the plus sign to create a new layer. And when you're doing digital watercolor, whenever you create a new layer, you're gonna wanna set the blend mode to multiply. So we're gonna tap this little N and here in the list of blend modes, we're gonna scroll until we get to multiply at the top. And this will help colors layer and just overall have a more convincing watercolor look. So we've got a new layer set to multiply. 
And now we're gonna switch brushes as well. So I'm gonna go into my brushes and this time we're gonna choose the Glaze Dry Liner. This is also a glaze brush, so it has that layering effect, but it's got this really nice texture to it, especially when you use it with light pressure. And I really love this brush. So let's also switch colors at this point. I'm gonna go into the color picker. And like I mentioned, this is gonna be this beautiful like rainbow line work, but we have to start with a single color. So you could choose any color, but I have, I really like starting with a blue. So I'm gonna go into my blues and you don't want a color that's too dark. You want something that's maybe about there in value. So that's the color that I'm gonna start with for this. And my brush size is set to 20%, which I think is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna start with these flowers and I'm just gonna basically trace over my sketch, all the lines on my sketch. And this is what's gonna give the illustration its definition and structure. So just go ahead and trace over the lines on the sketch. And then here in the petals, I'm gonna do sort of like a little flicking motion to get these tapered lines and here in the middle as well. Good, and now I'll do this flower. Just go ahead and trace around everything. And I'm not worried about doing everything in one continuous stroke here. I don't mind if my lines overlap a little bit. It's not gonna take away from the effect at all. Do these little insides of the petals and inside the middle of the flower. And now I'll start to do, um, let's do some leaves. So I'll start with this leaf here. I'm just gonna trace around the edge of the leaf like this. And you'll notice that, um, you know, it's not super consistent. Like sometimes it really overlaps the edge of the shape. Sometimes the line is like more over here and you can see the blue. Um, so a little bit of both I think makes this look really good, but you do wanna see some of the blue. So that way you will see the rainbow colors when we add that in. So I'm gonna do the middle line here and then these kind of middle veins. And I'm using really light pressure to do these lines because this brush is pressure sensitive. So the lighter the pressure, the, the thinner the line will be. And also the lighter the pressure, um, it gets a little bit more dry, even when you tilt it a little bit. So let me do these ones. If I tilt it a little bit more, it will be dry like that. So it's kind of up to you, you know, how kind of dry you want your lines to look. I think a little bit of that looks very nice. Okay, let's do this leaf over here. So tracing all the way around. And then down the middle. And then these lines. I love it when this brush gets a little skippy and that dry texture pops in. I think it's really pretty. Okay, so I'll go and do all these little veins and my last leaf right here. Again, tracing around, line down the middle, and all my little veins. Okay, so I've done all my leaves. Now I'm gonna do my stem. So I will start, I'll start with these kind of like smaller stems. So I'll just trace around those like that. Maybe I'll do this one and then these. And that one just is behind the big stem, so I'll just do it like that. And now the big stem, draw like an oval there. And then just trace them along the edges, just like I did with the leaves. There we go. So that's, oh, one more. That's my stem. And then I've got this little, I don't know, little star thing. <laughs> that's at the bottom of the stem. And now I'm gonna do the orange. And this one's probably the trickiest because it's like a circular shape, but I have a little trick that might help you out. So just go ahead and trace all around the edge of your orange. And as you can see, like this one, um, it kind of like goes out a little bit too far. There's a really big gap right there. 
and maybe this is like too much of an overlap. You could always undo and try again, but I have a little trick that I like to use to adjust my line work. Um, and that is the liquify tool. So you can go up to the adjustments menu and go to liquify and you're going to want to be in the push setting and you can adjust your brush size, to whatever works best, but you see how big my brush is. You basically just use that to kind of push it to wherever you want it to go. So that's how you can kind of like adjust things after you do it. It makes things a little bit easier. Okay. Oh, look at that. I forgot. I didn't. All right, so I've done all my line work for this piece. At this point, I can turn off my sketch. I don't need it anymore. So I'm gonna go up to my layers and I'm gonna uncheck the checkbox for the sketch layer. And to add our rainbow colors, we're gonna be using alpha lock. So we're gonna take two fingers and on the layer with the line work, we're gonna swipe to the right. You can also turn on alpha lock by tapping the layer and choosing alpha lock from the menu. Just make sure you have a checkerboard pattern in the layer thumbnail. And we're gonna switch brushes too. So we're gonna go over to our brushes and we're gonna choose the paint and water brush. And this is another one of my favorite brushes. Let me just show you on a new layer really quick what this brush does. When you use heavy pressure, you get these kind of strokes with really um, like hard edges. And then if you like lighten up your pressure, you get this really beautiful blendy wet kind of watercolor look. And you can actually go back over your edges and soften them up. So it's a really fun brush and we're gonna be using the softness of this to add those different colors to our piece. So let me undo that and delete that layer. Okay, so we're back on our layer with the line work. We've got alpha lock turned on. We've got the paint and water brush. Now we get to choose some fun colors. So now we're gonna add all our rainbow colors and you can really choose any colors you want. So I like to use a very like bright saturated colors. So I'm gonna start with like a really bright pink. My brush size is set to 50%. Um, so now I'm just gonna kind of softly paint this color over some different areas in my line work. Just kind of like here and there, just pop in some colors wherever you think it needs a little bit of color. So I added in a bunch of pink in some random places. Now I'm gonna switch to a different color. Maybe I'll do, um, maybe I'll do like a reddish color. Just kind of paint that in. Uh, let's do uh, um, a yellow, I think would look very nice. Nice bright yellow. I'm gonna add that in. Oh, I like the yellow over the leaves, like on the veins, that looks really cool. Uh, let's see what else. I wanna do like a purple, so you can get purple. What else? Oh, this is still looking really blue. And let's do some orange. So a little bit of orange, especially like up here. I don't know if the orange orange line work on the orange looks good. The cool thing about this is you like can keep changing it over and over again. So you can just paint over it again. If you're like, oh, I don't like the way that color looks over there. Um, just paint over it again with a different color. I'm gonna use this like really bright cyan really nice and and I should mention that I'm not using heavy pressure with this brush so I can get that really like soft look we will do like a really light pink there. so yeah you can keep going with the colors as much as you want until it looks as rainbowy as you prefer but I think I'm pretty happy with where I'm at with my piece so at this point in the process, you could be done. I think it's really beautiful as is, but if you wanted to keep going, I wanna show you how to add a little bit of shading and detail to kind of take it up a notch. And I'm gonna be using the brushes from the sample pack plus a few other that are in the full watercolor wonder set. So let's add a little bit of shading to our orange. I'm gonna go into my layers. I'm gonna go back to the layer with the, um, like the shapes, the orange and the leaves and everything like that. So choose that layer. And I'm gonna switch to the glazed hard edge round brush and I'm gonna use this brush to create some shadows. So I'm gonna start by sampling my orange color that's already on the canvas. And like I mentioned, the cool thing about this brush is you can layer strokes and it gets darker and darker. So we can actually use that to our advantage to create some shadows. So I'm gonna draw sort of like a crescent shape along the bottom edge of my orange, something like that. And you could leave it like that if you like this really like hard shadow look, 
But if you wanted to soften it, I have a great tool in the full watercolor wonder set to do that. So I'll show you that. So the watercolor wonder set comes with three brush sets. We've got the core set, we've got the glazes, and then we've got the tool set. So this can be found in the tool set and it is the water blender brush. So I'm gonna choose that brush. My brush size is pretty big, I'm at 75% ish. And then I'm just gonna basically softly paint over the edge of that brush stroke and soften it out. So this creates more of a like wet on wet look and it's really blendy and I just love that. So let me go back now to my um, glaze hard edge round. If you're in the full set, you can find this in the glazes set or you can find it in your sample pack, but it was the glaze hard edge round. And I'm gonna use that brush to add some little, little dots here. I just think this adds a little bit of style and personality. It's kind of like a stylized version of the texture of the orange. So that's totally optional. You can do that if you want. You can also add like a shadow under the leaves. So I'll do that. So I'm just gonna basically draw kind of like a leaf shape going right under that. Kind of like that, which I think looks pretty cool. You could also grab the blender brush if you wanted to like blend out the bottom of the shadow, like the shadow is kind of like falling off. That's another optional step. Um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of shadows to my leaves as well. So now I'm gonna go back to that um, hard edge round. This one's in the sample pack. So I'm gonna zoom into this leaf and I'm gonna sample the color that I already have here. And just swatch that out to see if that'll work well for a shadow. And I think it will. You can always adjust if you would need to make the color lighter or darker. And I'm just gonna draw a shadow under this one as if the top leaf is casting a shadow on the bottom leaf, so just something like that. And another thing I like to do with these glaze and brushes another is thing layer that I like on something to do that's a little with bit lighter and more glaze. saturated to create these really dynamic colors. So let me show you what I mean on this leaf here. I'm gonna select a color that is a green, but maybe like a kind of like yellow green, but something that's very light and light but saturated so like almost at the top of the disc and then I'll just do a swatch to show you what I mean like see how adding that very light color really changes it makes it more saturated and I love like I just love the difference that it makes so this is an optional step but something that I like to do when I'm doing watercolor is layer on just like a really light saturated color just makes the colors pop so if you want to you can choose a color like that and paint over all your leaves. I'm doing it very loosely. There we go. And then you can do the same thing on the orange. So for the orange, I would choose like a warm yellow or something like that. And just like, again, something very light. You could do a little swatch so you can see the difference. Like this is nice, but like, I love that you can kind of pick up on some of the yellows in there. It might be hard to see on camera, but you can play around with that and see if that's something that you like for your work as well. So I'm just gonna loosely use that really light, yeah, light yellow and just paint all over my orange. And I'm trying to do it all in one continuous stroke but not being super precise about it. Yes, I love the difference that that makes in my painting. Okay, so a couple more things. We're gonna add a little bit of detail to our flowers and our stem. For the flowers, I'm gonna paint a little bit of yellow in the middle. So since I already have a yellow chosen, I'm just gonna pretty much use that color. So I did like a couple passes. So I layer in a couple strokes in the middle to make it nice and bright. And then I think it'd be nice to add a little bit of like peachy pink to the middle of the petals. So I'm gonna go into kind of like my orangey red colors and then just choose something really, really light like that. And then just add a little splotch kind of at the bottom of each of the flowers just to make them a little more interesting. And now I'm gonna do my stem and I think I'm gonna layer on a really light color just to kind of make this even more dynamic. So I'll start with the color that I have as a base and then, um, I don't know, I'm gonna go a little bit more yellow and just do really, really light color. Yeah, I like that. And just kind of go over the whole thing. Great. And now I'm gonna choose, I'll sample this color again, and I'll use that to create some shadows. I think that color will work nice for shadows. So I'm just gonna line under 
each of the stems like that, just a little bit of a shadow. And then also kind of a cast shadow underneath. So it's like these stems are casting a shadow on the, the big stem. And then I'll also add a little bit of shadow on one side of the whole stem like that. So now I've got some shading there. Um, I could soften that if I wanted to with my water blender. I actually have one called the Precise Blender, which is really good for these like fine details. So I'll use that. Or you can just leave this like hard edge shadow. It's kind of up to you. So I just kind of blended that a little bit. And let me go back to the glazes set and I'm gonna choose the glaze dry liner now. And I'm gonna use that to create some kind of like wood, almost like barky texture, just by adding a few little lines here and there. Maybe a little darker with my color. So just to kind of give it some more texture. I'm just adding like a bunch of lines, also using the like drier elements of this brush. I think it looks really cool. Okay, now I'll zoom all the way out. And there is my completed orange. I really love how this turned out, especially with the rainbow line work. I think that is just such a fun detail. And you can use that in so many different ways on so many different subjects. I went through and did a bunch of this week's Making Art Everyday prompts, and I think it was a fun way to explore drawing different subjects in the same style, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you sit down to draw. If you're looking to grow your creative practice by drawing and procreate, you should join the Making Art Everyday Challenge. Making Art Everyday is a series of daily drawing prompts, tutorials, and motivation to help you nurture your creative practice. Each month, we pick a theme, and we have prompts for every single day of the year. Your goal doesn't have to be to draw every day, just to make creativity a part of your everyday life. You'll find our full prompt list and related tutorials at makingarteveryday.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed painting with me today. Again, I'm Lisa Bardot, and I help people find their creativity through drawing on the iPad. If you like to support the work I do, you can check out my premium brush sets that inspire creativity, including Watercolor Wonder, at bardobrush.com. The full Watercolor Wonder set comes with 50 brushes plus five textured watercolor canvases to help you craft watercolor works of art with ease. You'll also get an 80 page in-depth user guide with all my tips and tricks about how to get the most out of these brushes, plus six mini tutorials. And if you wanna take your learning to the next level, you should join Art Makers Club. Art Makers Club is a joy-filled creative community and learning hub for digital art makers. As a member, you'll get access to a growing library of in-depth courses, live virtual events and tutorials, free Procreate brushes, and more. In our community clubhouse, you get to connect with like-minded learning artists, share your work, ask for feedback, participate in discussions, and so much more. Come join us in the club. You can learn more at artmakersclub.com. Sharing your work on Instagram? I would love to see it. Use the hashtag Bardo Brush. And if you're drawing the Making Art Every Day prompts, use the hashtag Making Art Every Day. Thanks and happy art making. If you like this video, please subscribe for more awesome tutorials and check out one of my other videos. Have a great day.